Well, for more now on the state of the global economy, I'm joined by the OECD chief economist, Piercarlo Paduan. Piercarlo, thank you so much for joining us. There's, of course, yesterday you had estimates out from the OECD saying that it might be a little bit tougher to grow than previously expected. What do you make of those Japanese figures? Actually, a little bit glimmer of hope for that economy that's been going through such a tough time for the last two decades. Uh, well, uh, we, we released our interim assessment yesterday, which uh, uh, points to a recovery which is still ongoing, but at a somehow slower pace. Um, this is something that's true for the group of the G7 economies we were looking at in particular. Um, as far as Japan, of course, is concerned, uh, you have a combination of the need to uh, provide stimulus to the economy and at the same time live with a, a very high level of debt. This is not new. So you have a combination of old problems in the new situation. Um, we, in general, uh, support the idea that in the situation of the need to fiscal consolidate, uh, you need to have targeted measures both on the spending side and the tax side so that they are least harmful to growth or possibly growth friendly. Yes. Pierre Carlo, I also wanted to get really your sense of what this trade surplus that we had from China means for relationships with the U.S. Are we going to see a lot more pressure from U.S. officials for them to reevaluate their currency? Uh, yes, but uh, also uh, let me recall that there is a major effort ongoing within the G20 process which is uh, taking a hard look on how to provide uh, sustainable rebalancing, which requires certainly an adjustment on the exchange rate side, but also an adjustment on the fiscal side and, uh, in interestingly, more and more relying on structural measures which would raise potential output and reallocate resources of the medium to long term. So I agree that there is a problem with exchange rates, but this should be put in the context of a broader uh, rebalancing to which all the major economies participate. Yeah, we saw also a, a lot of talk about uh, the uh, Chinese central bank actually changing their reserves. Would you say that in the next one to two years, also because of the global headwinds, the dollar won't be the currency of reference anymore? Well, of course, uh, uh, the talks about uh, reforms of the international monetary system and therefore what uh, uh, roles should uh, individual currencies play uh, is especially, uh, especially high when there are times of crisis and, and major uh, change. But again, the issue of uh, strengthening the international monetary system is, goes beyond that. And in the short term, again, the G20 are looking at issues such as financial safety nets, uh, and also a way to uh, give more emphasis to multilateral instruments uh, in addition or as opposed to simply unilateral solutions like reserve accumulations and also regional solutions. So I would say that it's not just a question of whether the renminbi will play a major role, which I believe it will over the long term. It's a question of uh, um, redirecting instruments and providing a, a better complementarity between multi uh, multilateral and regional and national approaches to uh, financial stability. Uh, Pier Carlo, we only have 30 seconds. What's your biggest fear for this year? Sorry, I can't hear you. What is your biggest fear? What are you the most scared of? What, what am I worried about? Yes. Uh, well, um, we are looking at a weakening of the recovery, but the recovery is still there. Uh, we have all been saying that we will be out of the crisis when the recovery will move from being policy-driven to self-sustained. And this is a very delicate passage. So uh, I am uh, hoping that this passage will be accomplished uh, safely and strongly and as soon as possible. So we are Mr. looking Paduan. anxiously at that issue. Thank you so much, uh, Piercarlo Paduan. There.